right, I think we'll get started then. All right, welcome to the 31st annual induction ceremony of the Niobrara chapter of the National Honor Society. The National Honor Society celebrated its 100th year in 2021. While many things have changed in a century, the National Honor Society still considers connecting with and serving the community its highest value. In fact, the National Honor Society has the highest rate of community service, charitable donations, and blood donations per member as any national student organization. The National Honor Society is an organization formed by the National Association of High School Principals in 1921 to honor scholastic achievement among outstanding high school students. Membership in the local chapter is an honor bestowed upon a student by the faculty. If a student's GPA meets the minimum 90% cumulative average while enrolled in at least five core classes, they are invited to apply for Honor Society induction. A student must write an essay describing their scholarship, leadership, character, and service. Of those applications, the candidates you see before you today were those chosen by an anonymous panel, faculty panel, to be inducted. We will now introduce our honored speaker for today. Our speaker today is Van Sedanik, a 2004 graduate of Niagara High School and member of the National Honor Society. The Niagara alumni pictures in the hallway hold pictures of several of his family members in addition to his. Many of you recall his wife as a teacher here at Niagara, get your oil changed at Vic's service, or see his mother walking their two border colleagues in Old Town. Vance earned his Bachelor of Science degree in contemporary media and journalism from the University of South Dakota in Vermilion. After working as a sports writer in different cities in the Midwest, Vance and his family now reside in the Scotland, South Dakota area. A full-time mail carrier, Vance still writes sports features for the Yankton Press and the Coden Paper. Please join us in welcoming Mr. Vance Allen. So when Mrs. Hanslick asked me to speak today, I, I thought about it and came to the conclusion of, yeah, why not? And, and Mrs. Hanslick, you can, you can send the check to 1153 Street, Scott, South Dakota, and I'm totally kidding. We're taking donations. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm very happy to be here with all of you today. Uh, when I committed to coming, my next question was, what exactly am I going to talk about? What, what should I tell you guys? I, as you heard, my wife, Emily, I, I told her about this honor. And also told my mom that, hey, Niagara High School wants me to speak at their National Honor Society induction ceremony. Um, kind of funny considering exactly 20 years ago I became a member of the Honor Society. Uh, when I sat down to figure out what I wanted to speak about today, I did what everybody does. I, I took to Google. So I Google Honor Society and get the four pillars of the Honor Society. Uh, I'm going to go through those four and how, where I shook out on those uh, back in the day, 20 years ago. Uh, the first one is scholarship which means a student must have the grade point average. Um, I was good there. I was somewhere in the 90s. Coincidentally, my grade point average is probably the same as some of the high school staff. Their best years were probably in the 90s, so we're at least similar on that level. Uh, the, the next is leadership. Um, I, I knew I had good enough leadership qualities. I was part of student council, so I figured that box is checked. Service uh, must be committed to serving the community. I was active in the Lutheran church, scoops some snow off some neighbor's driveway, uh, moats some yards, so we're good there. So three for three, looking good, feeling good about everything. Next is character. Members must have strong character and be good role models. Here's where I fell short as a junior, but I was much better as a senior. Let's go back 21 years ago, and I realized in doing that, um, some of you weren't born yet, which makes me feel really old. Um, I swear I'm not that old. In all seriousness, all those years ago, I realized now that I did not have character good enough to be an Honor Society member. Back then, I wrong, wrongfully thought when I didn't make the Honor Society that I was in the right, that the teachers and staff making that decision didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know what they were talking about. The one problem that in reality was a big issue for me was underage drinking. In the winter of 2007, I was pulled over by a Nebraska State Patrolman. The end result was my second minor possession. On a side note for my first MIP, me and some of my friends met Trooper Sears on the first day of school my sophomore year. Not a good way to start a school year. I do not recommend that. Try to avoid that if all possible. <laughs> anyway, my second meeting with Trooper Sears came because my front license plate on my car was bent down. 
couldn't see it, that's why he pulled me over. After I was in trouble, I kept repeating that. He wouldn't have pulled me over if my front plate wasn't bent down. <laughs> Pay no attention to the underage drinking I was doing. Back then, I didn't learn anything from that moment. I was too stubborn, too prideful, too arrogant. I eventually realized this, your character matters. Your character is a product of the decisions that you make. I certainly shouldn't have been drinking. In some ways, I thought that it was in high school, that's what kids in this town do. We've been doing it for years, proud of the culture, it's just what we do. But in reality, by God's grace that I'm standing here in front of you today, very fortunate that during those times, something unspeakable didn't happen to me or any of my friends. After my second MIP, I knew I had to make some changes. I had to make better choices. I had to find things to do on the weekends besides drink. And I also learned that you don't have to stay stuck in your problems. If you're struggling with something, talk to a parent, family member, anybody here at the school. They would love to help you with any issues that you have. I should have done that. I should have reached out. And I also realize now that drinking won't help you with the awkwardness of these years. I was kind of a goofy off the wall kid in high school. I probably should have embraced that more. I've done that much more as an adult. Austin, the oldest of our three girls, uh, told me last Sunday that my mom is funnier than me. Well, the joke is actually gonna be on her because now I'm just gonna go about and do every goofy, silly dad joke I can and show her that I'm actually number one. <laughs> I also like to tell you guys that you don't get to come back and do these days again. Commit yourself to what you're doing right now. There are so many things academically and athletically where I simply went through the motions. I lifted weights in that weight room right over there and it just basically showed up do what I needed to do, but I didn't have any expectations. I wasn't mindful of what I was doing, and I just going through the motions. You also need to take, the, and I also want to take this time to give a huge apology to JJ Parks. I know he's sitting up there. He was my football coach. Every game of, of my senior year, we were done at halftime. 45 point mercy rule. The problem was we were on the losing end of every single one of those games. Mr. Parks said it then, and I, I still remember saying it now. You're going to look back and miss this. You're going to want this back you'll realize you should have given more effort. He was honestly pleading with us to give more effort. In some practices or games, we really gave close to zero in terms of effort. Um, many of our games ended with the opposing team's junior varsity scoring a touchdown on us right at the end of the, end of the first half, right before halftime, on our starting defense. Mr. Parks, I know he was embarrassed then, and we as players should have been. The amount of times he came into the huddles in the end zone and said, that was our JV that just ran a simple ISO line and they scored on you. It, it still rings true in my head. And, and it honestly hit me in my 20s after I graduated from USD and was covering a powerhouse football uh, high school in, in Hutchinson, Kansas, my first full-time job. I hadn't given the, the proper, eff proper effort back in high school. And I couldn't go back and do it again. So Mr. Parks, I'm sorry. I should have truly committed myself to you back then. I didn't commit myself in football because I thought I was a basketball player. Football was the sport to get me through to the fall to basketball. So when Jocelyn Miller set the single game Niverberg scoring record last month, someone posted a few different Nebraska high school records on Facebook. In boys basketball, Niverberg had 57 straight losses from 2004 to 2007. That's an unfortunate record that ranks in the top 10 all time. I graduated in 04, so that means I'm a part of that losing streak. I was slightly more committed to basketball, but I look back and think I could have worked 10 times harder than I actually did. I guarantee you that if you work hard and are dedicated to something, put the time in and be mindful of what you are practicing, good things will happen. Work on the shots you win in a game. Practice the things you'll use in a game. I don't think anyone has ever looked back and said, you know, I really should have been less committed to this. I wish I, I, wish I would have had less success at it. Now in the classroom, I was pretty solid. My grade point average was high enough to be second in my class. I gave a pretty good salutatorian speech at the 2004 graduation ceremony. I tell you it's on YouTube, but we all know that uh, YouTube didn't exist back then, and maybe I'm actually older than I want to acknowledge. But uh, I also tell you, I simply looked at the grade at the top of the page, worksheet or test, and if it was a 91 or above for an A, I was good with it. I didn't actually look at it and see what, need, what I needed to do to get better. What areas did I need to correct? Without fully knowing it, I was making a choice to not truly improve. I was content with being less than my best. Eventually, the harsh reality set in. After I graduated from Niagara, went to USD. You know, in classes I was dedicated, I figured this is college, I'm paying to be here, or at least Victor Ruth Yannick and Big Service is paying for me to be here. Regardless, I knew I needed to be focused. I had skated through in high school, and it was good enough. So in the fall of 2004, 
I started working for the Ballant student run newspaper at the University of South Dakota. I remember getting my first story back from the copy editors and, and going through it. My favorite color is red, and there was so much red on that sheet of paper. Uh, my English teacher and, and a writing teacher here at the school back then was Mrs. Kapitschka. She would have probably said, yeah, I told you so. This is exactly <laughs> what I was telling you you need to correct. You need to make the changes. But unlike in high school where I simply looked at something and moved on, I actually made those corrections and did what needed to be done. During my time at USD, I was a beat reporter covering football, men's basketball, and also track and field. Uh, and I also realized by covering track and field just how important the mental side of things are. If you work hard, believe in yourself, good things are likely to happen. Have confidence in your abilities. In addition to developing a lot of great relationships with players and coaches, along the way I figured out how to become a pretty good writer. Uh, led me to a couple of different jobs, and it's kind of a passion that I still have, and it kind of burns a little brighter now, getting back into it. Um, so in closing, when I look back 20-some years ago, when I was sitting in the spot that you guys are today, my best advice would be to fully commit to what you're doing. If you are already doing that, stay focused on it. Keep practicing and making those good choices. It'll turn out wonderfully for you. If you aren't, I ask you to take some time and examine yourself and, and figure out truly what can you do to be your absolute best in the classroom, on the court, in the community, everywhere. If that answer is no, make the change. Your decisions define your character. You certainly aren't always going to make the right choices all the time. But once you have a misstep, know that you don't have to live in that spot. You can overcome it. I made mistakes in my past, but I was determined not to let that be the narrative about my life. Learn from your mistakes. Find the positives. Learn the lessons and move forward. God made you with a purpose in mind. You will find it and you will thrive. Thank you again, everybody, for your time today. Thank you, Vance. We are proud to have you as a library graduate. We will now proceed with the induction ceremony. The 1921 National Honor Society Charter says, Scholarship denotes a commitment to learning. A student must be willing to spend hours reading and studying, knowing the lasting benefits of a cultivated mind. We should continue to learn even when formal education has ended, for learning ends only with life. Knowledge is one great element in life which leads to the highest success. It can be acquired only one way, through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past and the light of, and the light which illuminates the future. Candidates, you will have the responsibility to continually expand your world through the opportunity and scholarship. What that means today is you must choose to learn. Knowledge gives you an advantage. It allows us to use the past to make good decisions for the future. The ability to think for yourself is one of the most powerful tools you can carry with you in life. Service is represented by the red candle. The 1921 National Honor Society <coughs> Charter says, service can be described in various ways. In the routine of the day's work, many opportunities arise to help others. Willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary compensation or recognition is the quality we seek in our membership. We are committed to the idea of volunteering, in our, volunteering our time and abilities to the creation of a better tomorrow. For students today, we often think of community service as planned events where we clean up a park or volunteer at an, at an animal shelter. However, it is important to recognize service as a mindset, how you think and view others. Service is believing someone else is just as or even more important than yourself and then acting that way. 
We all know the smallest act of kindness can have life-changing results. Leadership is represented by the Purple Candle. The 1991 National Honor Society Charter says, leaders should exert a wholesome influence on the school in taking the initiative in class and school activities. The real leader strives to train and aid others to attain the same objective. The price of leadership is a sacrifice, the willingness to yield one's personal interest for the interest of others. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate, no matter what power and resource may exist in the country. They are ineffectual without the guidance of a wise leader. Leadership is always needed. Thus, a leader is a subjective charge to each of our members. Being a leader today is probably the same as 100 years ago when this was written. Some people are born with natural leadership abilities and others learn those skills. Either way, a leader is a person who does what is right for the group as a whole, not just themselves. A leader can communicate goals, encourage others, and set a good example. A group without a leader cannot travel far. Character is represented by the Green Candle. The 1929-21 the National Honor Society Charter says, Character is the force within one, each individual, which distinguishes that person from others. It gives us a sense of individuality it is without which one no one can respect oneself, nor hope to obtain the respect of others. It is this force of character that guides one through life, and once is developed, it grows steadily. Character is achieved and not received. It is the product of the constant action, daily striving, to make the right choice. The problem of character is the problem of self-control. We must, we must be in reality what, wish, what we wish to appear to others. De by demonstrating such qualities as respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, fairness, caring, and citizenship, we may hope to prove by example that we value character. These words from 100 years ago still ring true today. Your character is who you are. Don't confuse character with your reputation, which is what others believe about you. Reputations may be false, but your character will reveal itself in your actions. None of us are perfect, and we will never be. However, we can learn from our mistakes and use them to strengthen our character. Character is shown by the tiny decisions you make every single day to do the right thing, even when nobody will know. Do the right thing, even when you won't be praised for it. Members are expected to build each other up and not to tear each other down. Members and new inductees, please stand. In a rare moment of humility, the great scientist Isaac Newton, remember freshman, once said, if I have seen farther, it's only because I have stood on the shoulders of giants. Now, some of you remember that Newton wasn't that great of a guy, right? He kind of liked to take a lot of credit for stuff that wasn't his. So for him to say that was pretty important. What he meant was, even though he was an incredibly brilliant person, his success was only possible due to the work of others. The great scientists that came before him. None of us are successful on our own. All of us have people behind us, encouraging, correcting, loving, and forgiving us. Members and inductees, please take a moment to thank those that have helped you reach this achievement. Please go retrieve your cameras.
The white candle represents truth and knowledge, and from it, the other, other can, candles of character, scholarship, leadership, and service were kindled. As this torch gives light to you, so may you give light to others. Current members, inductees, and graduate members, please join me in the pledge. I pledge myself, I pledge myself always to seek the light of truth, always to, seek the light of truth to hold scholarly habits, to, hold scholarly habits to, engage in worthy service, to engage in worthy service, and to lead forward in all things, to lead forward in all things that shall advance the welfare of the school. As you sign your name to the roll of members, please accept your card and pin as symbols of your induction into National Honor Society. They are yours as long as you remain a member in good standing. <coughs> Congratulations to all of our members. I hope today and days to come as members of the Honor Society will be included as good memories from your high school years. Please continue to serve as role models and be an ins inspiration to future members of this chapter. Once again, congratulations to our new members. Thank you again to our wonderful speaker, and this concludes our induction ceremony. Thank you. Members and our guests, please join us for Cake in the Lobby.